John, it's great to have you with us. And thank you so much. My pleasure. Um, well, it's our pleasure as well. And, and it's been wonderful uh, working with you and seeing the way you have used sales choice. And we would like uh, to take this time to guide audiences through uh, your experience and enrich them with what you have learned and how you went about solving some of these problems in, in your organization. So before we begin, John, could we start with a quick introduction from you? Sure. I have been uh, director of sales operations at RL Datix for five years. And before that, with Quest Software and uh, Dell Software, uh, I think in those uh, capacities, we were doing compensation plans, uh, quota setting, forecasting, and uh, sales support. Uh, so the issue for us with sales choice was really around the forecasting uh, side of uh, sales operations. Okay, could you elaborate more on the problems uh, that you were facing? Yeah, the, the key uh, appeal that the VP of sales had for uh, uh, the sales choice solution and the problem that he saw is that as the sales team grew and as the opportunities continued to come in, it was hard for them to find the needles in the haystack. Which were the deals with the highest likelihood to close? Where should they be spending their time uh, how do they know that the deals that they are pursuing uh, are are the right ones? And and that was the dilemma. They there's a limit to how uh, uh, thinly a sales rep can spend their time. Generally, the thinking is 30 to 40 uh, active opportunities at a time. Some of our reps had over 100 and were spending time on deals that were getting to close or were basically diluting their effort. And so we were looking for a, for a solution to uh, help them focus. Interesting. And uh, how did you go about solving uh, that issue then? Uh, well, I, I think that in the, um, uh, the possibility of the uh, artificial intelligence tool behind sales choice, uh, there is an opportunity scoring uh, that allows the sales rep to stack rank or uh, qualify their opportunities with insight that is uh, more um, well, machine learning driven as opposed to intuitive. Uh, I think anybody who might be working a deal may be stubborn about it and uh, continue on despite the fact that it has a very low likelihood of closing. I've seen many of those. Uh, but I, I think that if you can step back from a list of you know, 50 to 100 deals and see the, the top 10 stack ranked, and then that allows the manager to focus uh, and it allows a sales rep to be organized. And, and frankly, there, there's one more uh, hidden thing that was a benefit for me as, um, in the forecasting side is that uh, in something like Salesforce, there is a sales stage percentage that is kind of a, a rule of thumb. You know, if you are uh, in contract negotiation, it's at 90 percent. Etc. Whereas uh, the, one of the benefits I found with sales choice is that there was a, a probability scoring uh, where sales choice would calculate uh, a percentage uh, value that you could use in waiting your pipeline. And that was way more accurate because I, I could do math and say, well, you know, historically this rep had a greater likelihood of closing a um, uh, qualified deal than that rep. So I, I'm going to hedge. Uh, their call, or I'm going to look at their call, again, using my own intuitive sense, but that doesn't really scale very well. And uh, so what sales choice did was basically allow us to, uh, on our um, forecasting and pipeline reporting, be able to have a far more empirical scoring of opportunities and to look at the weighted pipeline that in the end, the last couple of quarters I've used it have come within three to 5% of uh, the forecast call um, six to nine weeks prior to the end of the quarter. And that was uh, far more accurate than the forecast call that actually came from the field. Well, um, well thank you for sharing that. What, what would you say was uh, your experience like going about the implementation and adoption of, of um, this solution um, at the company? Because of course it was a, a new process, a new approach to things. Well, the, the sales choice implementation was uh, a no-brainer, and maybe that's because uh, 
you you did all the work. It uh, it was um, aside from some issues around you know getting access to the VPN, which are are basic security things. Uh, it was remarkable how uh, easily Sales Choice Engine uh, actually worked in our system, and the dashboard showed up. And uh, after a time, it started uh, to learn, and uh, we were really struck by the accuracy of the win loss calls that the AI tool had uh, that right out of the gate was remarkable. It was in the 90% plus range, which was you know fantastic. Uh, so right off the bat, I think it proved its worth. Uh, there were a couple of interesting things. One is we had to make sure that we had our, our um, enterprise, you know, our role hierarchy uh, figured out properly because uh, when, you, when a manager wants to look at sales choice, they will uh, see it basically on the basis of a role hierarchy. And so that's a very important housekeeping thing. You should have that clean anyway. Uh, but when you're trying to use dashboards and Salesforce, if you don't have that clean, then your data isn't going to be complete. So that, that's one thing. Uh, the other is uh, that there's a heat map of a uh, um, view. It's a grid, red to green, of uh, fields that uh, sales choice is seeing as being indicative of uh, closed likelihood. And there's some merit in that as well. It's again, housekeeping. What are the fields that nobody is filling out and basically have no bearing? Uh, it, it's, a, I think, some insight that lets us say, here are the important things for our sales reps to fill in when you've got 100 or 200 total uh, variables in Salesforce and in, in, uh, in opportunity. Uh, and here are the fields that nobody fills in and don't actually have any bearing. Uh, so that's a fabulous insight in uh, operations on uh, making sure that you've set up your Salesforce instance in a way that actually drives value for the sales reps by um, helping them close deals. And sales choice, like a referee there, that's saying, ah, this deal, or this, um, this field, you know, nobody uses it. You might as well get rid of it because it doesn't matter. And uh, I think that's an ongoing project because there's always somebody who thinks a field is important, but this heat map really shows it isn't. And, and uh, that's uh, a great opportunity to kind of streamline for the salespeople uh, the whole opportunity process. That's great. Uh, and, and thank you. It is indeed our, our privilege to hear this. You have spoken in terms of uh, the, the level of organization it brings to the team, uh, corrective measures that can be taken or course corrections that can be made, the accuracy of predictions that it brings to the table, and the ability to allow you to audit and track all of that, all of which are, are great benefits and the impact that shows. What would you say were the lessons that you learned as, as part of this journey? Um, I think it's, it's the classic, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. And in our sales team of about 40, uh, I've heard last week that one of our top sales reps uh, basically lives in sales choice. All of his work is focused based on what he's learning in sales choice, and he's extremely successful. And I look at that and go, well, duh, it's, it's you know, a great tool. It helps them focus. It's doing what it's supposed to do. Uh, but the problem is that there are lots of sales reps who go, oh, it's just another thing. I don't understand it. Um, and they don't use it. And I think that uh, with my sales enablement team, we've talked about how we can leverage uh, the success that some reps have and create our own internal success stories. I, I think that the, the proof is in the pudding. You know, if, if we're uh, asking this organization to support the cost of an additional tool, we have to prove the value of that tool. And I certainly have done that on the forecasting side where it's, it's worth it just out of the box like that uh, because it helps me be more accurate in forecasting and that's totally worth the price of admission. Uh, but then with the sales reps as well, the shows uh, that, hey, here's your top rep. This is his practice. This is why he's a top rep. And it's because he's using Salesforce properly and he's using sales choice to focus on what deals uh, to, to work on. Uh, Again, I can't force a sales rep to, to use the tools, uh, but it's certainly something where I can encourage if somebody wants to really be successful to use the tools that help them be that. And to me, sales choice is, uh, is a, an invaluable part of that toolkit. Well, that's uh, that's that's music to our ears, and and that's very true, of course. Uh, uh, each of the points that you made with, with regards to adoption, uh, which brings us finally to to a 
relatively simplistic question. Uh, given the investment that you made in sales choice, your entire experience, the journey, and the benefits you were able to extract, the ROI you were able to get out of it, uh, would you recommend sales choice and why? To put it in a nutshell and conclude for our audience. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a no-brainer. I, I think that the ROI is uh, fairly straightforward. We're enterprise uh, sales organization uh, with deals in 50 to 100,000 range. And if we can get another deal because somebody did their job properly using this tool, then we're ahead of the game. It's, it's just, it's the right kind of um, support to give the sales team. Uh, but you have to really make sure that you train them on it, that they learn how to use it properly. So that, that's a key element. But I, I'd strongly recommend it. I, I think that, you know, as, as any sales operations person, uh, you're getting hounded every day with companies that are saying, hey, you know, would you like to accelerate your quote to cash process? Or would you like to identify high value accounts? Or would you like to, you know, um, uh, uh, you know, create scripts for, for people using this engine or that engine. Uh, I'm excited about uh, working with Sales Choice is what I, I think is a very leading edge company in the space. I think uh, that uh, working with the team, uh, it, it supports the technology and we get a lot back out of it, which is why I'm such a booster for it. And uh, I think that it's, it's invaluable for an organization to use uh, empirical tools that are driven by AI to mine data and to uh, get uh, insight out of that data. And if you're not doing that, I think that you're missing the boat. And uh, I strongly suggest looking at something like Sales Choice. Uh, I think that in the context of our Salesforce instance, it's very affordable. It uh, works without a lot of overhead and it drives a lot of value. Well, um, thank you for, for all of that, John. And uh, on, on behalf of the entire Sales Choice uh, family, it's, it's a privilege to, to work with you and thank you. Indeed, thank you very much.